Presently I'm in the middle of uh, recapping a, a Chapman AM um, tuner, AM shortwave, medium wave shortwave tuner. Um, and I've replaced a lot of the capacitors already, the uh, paper capacitors that are inside. Uh, most of them were hunts. Um, I also came across some 0 0.01 capacitors I didn't actually have in my sort of stash of capacitors. So I went through um, some of the old junk at work. See if I could find anything that was uh, of any use, and I uh, managed to find these capacitors here, and they're obviously ten nan. And I thought, oh, they'll be fine, you know. That I'll, I'll stick some of those in it. And initially, I thought, well, that they look they certainly to me look like a uh, a polystyrene foil capacitor, like a bit more like this Wemo capacitor here. Uh, this is a polystyrene capacitor. Uh, very similar, and I'm thinking, oh, perfect, you know, the right value rated at 1 kV, that'll, that'll be fine. So I, uh, I bought a bag of them home because this is all stuff that's stashed away in a sort of like stuff going for uh, waste electrical equipment, junk stuff that's uh, no good. I thought, perfect, you know, got some capacitors, um, and I'll put them into my stores and stock up on some uh, useful value capacitors. So I've uh, Bought them back and put them in the uh, uh, Chapman, and I thought, oh, that's great, uh, you know. And uh, today I thought, well, I just um, I just go go through the stop check and see if the, the code numbers still in the computer and see if it actually tells you uh, when they were bought and roughly how old they are because there's no date code on them. So I entered the stop code number into the uh, database and it came up with paper capacitors, and I'm thinking paper. Really, I had no idea that we had still had or ever had paper capacitors in stores. So I'm thinking, oh great, I've just taken out some paper capacitors and replaced them with paper capacitors. That's what happens when you're a skinflint. You know, you won't you won't go and buy some uh, decent gear. You'll try and scavenge around for something cheap that's uh, free. And sure enough, uh, yep, these are paper capacitors. Uh, let me just get you one out just to show you what it looks like. And initially, to me, I thought, oh, that's a foil capacitor. It did look a bit odd at first. I thought, well, that's sort of not obvious, but but it certainly is a, cap a paper capacitor. So I'm thinking, well, that's all right. You know, they've never been used. They're, they're, they're probably absolutely fine. I'm not worried about them at all. I can, uh, I can use those. But I think, oh, what I'll do is I'll just check to see if, uh, see if they're performing okay. So I put them on the LCR, the uh, 40, uh, 4261 HP, and sure enough, it says, yep, yeah, about about 10 nanofarads. Yeah, about 10 nanofarads. That's fair. That's fine. I was happy with that. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just do the normal check I do with uh, capacitors to see if they're leaky. So I think well, it's rated at 1 kV. Let's uh, connect it up to my uh, isolation tester. So here's my isolation tester. And we'll start at uh, 250 volts just to have a look. So this, bear in mind, this is a new old stock. New old stock capacitor, paper capacitor. Um, and we're wired up to 250 volts. I'm going to apply 250 volts DC. There you go. 1.5 meg. All right, okay, so the capacitor's clearly leaky. Um, and But it could be used in a cathode bypass circuit with no problem at all. And you can see it's sort of trying to recover a bit, but it's, you know, a, a capacitor like that should have gone to over range by now, easily. And bear in mind I'm only running at a quarter of its rated voltage, it's rated to 1 kV. So let's stick the uh, Mega to 1000 volts and let's give it some volts. And we've got the warning annotation up, you're putting 1000 volts into something. And it's dropped to 680k. 660, 650, 640, 630, 620. So it's just fading away. So it's an interesting test. A lot of people say that it's due to age that these capacitors fail, but it's not. It's just because they, they they internally break down and they get worse and worse and worse. So that's worth bearing in mind. I know I've seen a lot of adverts on uh, eBay for uh, new old stock components. Um, Bear that in mind if you're thinking about replacing a paper capacitor with another paper capacitor. 
it's not the age, it's not the amount of use they've had, it's just the general breakdown of dielectric becoming acid and becoming conductive. These capacitors are capacitors, but they are also resistors. And they're fine in low tension circuits, like as I say, cathode bypass, um, but you put any voltage potential across them, you're going to get current draw. And things like uh, grid coupling capacitors, where you're connecting an anode of one uh, valve to the grid of the next one, you're going to get a DC bias on that grid, and that will result in that valve overheating because the valve is conducting hard DC all the time. So these capacitors really are going to go for scrap. They're, they're no good to me. Um, I can't trust them. They're paper capacitors. I'm going to have to take them out of the uh, Chapman tuner and uh, put my hand in my pocket and buy something that's a bit more suitable. But um, I hope that was interesting. Don't buy second-hand capacitors unless you're absolutely sure they're okay.